Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds at Motorhome Rehab Ranch. This will be a quick one, but I wanted to talk about something that's happening right now. You've seen us do these road trips and all the things to get prepared for it and all this stuff. I'm working with a gentleman right now that uh, uh, picked up a coach, 76, and he looked at all the videos, got the tools and everything, and took off. Shortly after he left, first he left to go to the tire store. On the way to the tire store, the alternator stopped running. This is the key I'm talking about. Out of the five delivery that I've done so far, four out of the five had a problem with its alternator or its isolator or both. So I'm thinking about this. We've seen alternator, uh, folks have alternator problems and all this stuff. And you go, well, you know, it happened and all this stuff. No, I think what we're looking at here is just like a water pump. If a water pump sits for a long time, the seal dries out. I think we may be looking at an issue with the alternators when they sit around a long time and they, they, they uh, get humid in them, and they get cold, hot, all this stuff. It, there's got to be something that affects the life of these alternators because they are dropping like flies on these coaches that are being uh, picked up, purchased. Very important. Uh, when this happens to you, if you, if you pick up a coach, <clears throat> first thing you want to do is you want to have that voltmeter. These pictures will be at the bottom of the video. You want to have that voltmeter, and you want to check the center terminal on this battery isolator right here. Fuzzy picture. But there's three terminals on, a, on this a blue fin thing, this battery isolator. With your engine running, you want to check the center terminal on this isolator. The center terminal comes right off the alternator. And if the alternator is not putting out, you will get zero volts right there. All right? Or if you get a voltage right there, that means the isolator itself is bad. Usually they open up. Sometimes they'll short out. But if your engine is running, you right here should have about 13, 1, 13, 4, maybe. Sometimes as high as 14. Right there. If you don't, I want you, if you're on the road, I want you to find an auto parts store. You verify the alternator doesn't work. I want you to find an auto parts store. And the first question you want to ask him is Does their alternator testing bench work? If they say no, say thank you very much. <clears throat> this gentleman went to the first place. I'm not going to mention who it was. They did not have an alternator testing machine. They said it didn't work. I don't know. He got an alternator from them. It had dust on the alternator. Dusty. Been there a long, long time. And they couldn't check it. He couldn't check his old one to verify it was bad. He couldn't check the new one to verify it was good. So he went and put it in, and guess what? It had seven volts. It no good, right out of the box. Took it right back into the store. They had another one. It was a late model, 2020, that it had been uh, refurbished. He put that in. Zero. Did not work. Talking to me, he called another auto parts store. Found that they had one, in fact, in stock. A 100 amp alternator in stock. He thanked the other parts store and he drove to the other place. The other place had an alternator checking. They verified that alternator was bad and they verified that the two alternators the guys bought, or well, the one alternator the guy bought, they kept, it was also bad. Fresh rebuild. Then they checked the alternator that they had in stock. It did work. They put it in and he was off and running. He lost a full day because of this alternator. Also, if your coach still is running a, a three-wire alternator, if there's a problem with the trigger circuit, which we all know about, you can deny it, but there is a problem with the trigger circuit. That alternator still won't work because the three-wire, the trigger wire is out. I strongly suggest if you're going to pick up a, 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 a coach that you have not you're just purchasing, you haven't driven or anything. Even if you, I'd tell you what, I really think you need to go get a new alternator. 
and you need to have it set up for a one wire alternator because whatever goes wrong with the entire motorhome, if you spin that alternator up, it will put out power. That's what this gentleman needed on the road. He lost a full day. I feel like the operator at the CDC and I'm seeing problems. They're coming up all the time. And this alternator issue is coming up a lot. These type one alternators are a problem. Older alternators are a problem. I think we need a fresh alternator. Please look at this. All right. Guys, this is just a quickie, but I wanted to hit you with this because it's, it's literally happening right now. The man is on the road. He finally got power. <laughs> I'll tell you another video later, but he's having a problem with his carburetor. There's something else that we need to do all the time with the carburetor is change that carb filter up front. And when you change the filter, there's a small seal in there. What's its half-life? It's about now. The seal went bad when he went to change the filter on the road. We'll talk about that later. But this alternator thing is something that we really, really need to, to, uh, to pay attention to and focus. Now, when you, when you uh, go to an auto parts store, <clears throat> you take your alternator in with you and you put it side by side to the one you're getting ready to buy. Because he'll check to verify yours is bad, he'll check to verify his is good, and then you're going to exchange. That's what needs to happen. And if you go to an auto parts store that does not have an alternator checker, thank them and find another one. Because it is a critical thing to know that that alternator is good when you put it in. Does it make sense? Also, <clears throat> if your alternator has one of these uh, uh, red wired connectors right here, I've got a better picture of it. Uh, it is, uh, well, 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 let's just leave it there. If you have one of these, take it off. This is something that used in the past that was trying to block the back EMF if the regulator failed. We found that the problem is not the regulator as much as it is the trigger circuit. So there is no value added in leaving that on. If you, if, certainly when you go to a one-wire alternator, that won't be used at all. None at all. But if you have a uh, three-wire alternator, you're going to keep using it and you have this as strong a rest. I uh, recommend personally to take that out. For other people who feel different ways, that's fine. We live in America, right? Alternators, you want to think about this. You also want to look at your belt. A lot of things with the alternator is very, very important. Call me if you have any questions about this. There are some <clears throat> alternator issues coming up in the next two to three weeks that will be very interesting. So my suggestion is to go out, check your alternator. Well, first go hug your motorhome. But go check your alternator. Fire the coach up. Read your battery. Read the center terminal on your isolator. See what your voltages are. Because in, in the upcoming uh, weeks, there's going to be some other talk about alternators. And that will be very information for you to know. Very good information for you to know. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Please comment. It's how I, I do more. And right now, the reason this whole video is here is because I'm living it. I'm living it with a gentleman on the road right now. So we learn from, from errors. This is an error. Thanks a lot. Hit like. Ranch hands, thanks a lot. Go get an alternator. Talk to you later.